Okay. I'm here with uh, Captain Frank Santoni, Santoni of uh, Boeing Commercial Airf Airplanes, Chief Test Pilot. Um, Captain Santoni, um, can you give us an update on the 787's test schedule? Uh, where are we now? So we're approximately 75% uh, complete with the test testing we're doing. We're moving into very concentrated certification flying right now. And then following that, we'll move into the FNR testing, which is functionality, reliability, and ETOPS. Okay. And what, what, uh, what effect did the November in-flight fire have on the flight test program? Well, you know, it, it slowed it down, um, I would say, significantly, but um, we are back on schedule flying right now. So we have all, all airplanes uh, up and running, and so um, based on that event, you know, we, we slipped our uh, schedule deliveries out to the third quarter this year. What surprised you most during the, 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 the simulation of the flight test program? Uh, something perhaps that the simulator didn't pick up? Um, you know, it's remarkable that the, uh, this airplane was designed digitally and we knew the airplane before it flew. So um, as far as surprises, the way it flew and how it flew, um, there, there weren't very many. So we we kind of knew the airplane before it ever got in the air. Um, the test pilots were flying it um, a year or so before in the simulator and once I got to the airplane, we we haven't found uh, um, very many surprises at all as far as the way it the way it's flying. We've had some systems hiccups like like the uh, incident in November, but aside from that, it's been remarkably uh, like we thought it was going to be. Okay, can you give us an update on where we are with the seven four seven eight program? Uh, you know, <coughs> given that it's an update to the seven four seven, is that going to be much more sort of straightforward and also with the intercontinental following on from the, the freight yeah, version? Yeah, so. So we're, we're in the freighter version right now. We've got uh, four of those airplanes in the flight test inventory, and we're flying them daily. The Intercon is going to be joining us shortly with two or three of their airplanes in the flight test inventory. And they're proceeding um, j just along parallel with the uh, 787. Um, sometimes uh, we see the 787 doing testing, similar testing before the 7478 does. Um, but right now they're, they're on fairly parallel courses and, uh, and chunking through the program. You're the chief pilot of Boeing. Um, what, what do you actually do day to day? Um, well, I, I beg our other chief pilots to let me fly their airplanes. <laughs> um, but, but day to day, we, we manage the, uh, the flight test scheduling uh, effort. Uh, we have about 45 test pilots, but we uh, have a, almost uh, eight airplanes. Well, actually, we have uh, 11 airplanes in, in the test inventory right now. So managing the right pilot in the right seat at the right time uh, takes a lot of my time. And then um, I will fly the different models to see how they're doing uh, um, several times a week. Okay. Um, that leads on to my next question. With a first flight on a Boeing airliner, a, a highly prestigious event, how do you decide who's a lucky crew who gets to fly it? Yeah, we, um, we put them in a dark room and let them fight it out. That's what we did. We, actually, actually, we assigned the chief, pilot, the chief model pilot for that airplane um, way before it's ever built, um, right at the initial start. So. The chief pilot is obviously the one that gets to fly, and then we assign um, deputy pilots to work with them. And during the process of, of going through the development program, we come to a uh, kind of a decision of which one of those guys gets the other seat. Okay. Well, when you're doing these sort of dynamic uh, flight tests, you know, for example, maximum brake energy, um, you're exploring the edge of the envelope uh, in a large airline. What, what's your favorite part of the testing process? Have you got one? Personally. Um, uh, I think I like the runway work, um, the, uh, the uh, work for, um, for example, max brake energy is very interesting. VMU, velocity minimum unstick, where you put the tail on the runway and see how, see how early the airplane will take off, that's, that's also an, an exciting test to do. So I think most of the pilots enjoy the precision and the challenge of working near the runway and um, looking at landing um, and takeoff performance, and th that's one of my favorites to do. What's been your, your, your proudest moment at the, at the company, do you think? Boy, there have, been, there have just been a lot of proud moments. Uh, um, certainly the first flight of the 777 when I was a chase pilot on that was a, was a proud moment. And then I actually got to fly three first flights of follow-on versions of the 777, the 300, the 300ER, and the 200LR. So you, you lump all four of those in somewhere in there, it's, it's probably my proudest moment. Okay. Um, turning to sort of glass cockpits and, and glass cockpit technology, um, with, with the glass cockpits of modern airliners, are you worried that future generations of pilots <coughs> may be fixated with these displays rather than airmanship and aviating the aircraft in emergencies? 
how do we go sort of guard against this? Yeah, a really great question. Um, we have to realize the generation of pilot today is different than the generation of pilot 30 years ago. So we have to grow the airplane technology um, with the pilots and, and what they're going to be used to. So the glass technology that's showing up on our airplanes now is also showing up on the airplanes they're going to be training in as students. So we, we have to grow the technology with the uh, type of pilot coming in. I think we're doing a pretty good job with that. We're, we're kind of keeping in step. But we have to realize that the, the airmanship that was required 30 years ago is a different type of airmanship today. You're a former, former naval aviator. So uh, how does testing airliners compare to landing an A4 Skyhawk on an aircraft uh, carrier at night? Um, there's, there's nothing that compares with landing on a carrier at night. <laughs> so um, it's, a different, it's a different environment. You know, it's not a tactical military aviation environment that I'm dealing in now. So the environments are different. The, uh, the challenges and the fun of flying is similar, though. So I, I'd say some of the work I did in the Navy around aircraft carriers was some of the best most fun flying I ever did, but then again, some of the stuff I've done at Boeing, you, you can't compare with. Okay. Well, my final question is, uh, if money was no object, what aircraft would be in your fantasy personal hangar to fly for fun? 777. Okay. <laughs> and, and, I, and so I say that because I grew up, I grew up with the 777. It's, uh, the Boeing airplanes are unbelievably um, well behaved and, e and wonderful to fly, and so Although I have a, a, a personal favorite with that model, um, any of those I think would be uh, would be okay with me. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much for your time, Captain Sunfeli. Thank you. Thanks.